Hello, I'm Callum and welcome back to my Drawing London series. In this video, I'm going to be drawing Piccadilly Circus, but more importantly, explaining how I do it. I will actually also release a real-time video of the entire drawing. It's about two hours long. That will come out next Sunday. This is a tutorial video, so thanks so much for the suggestion and hopefully you enjoy it. I'm going to start by drawing a horizontal line across the centre of the page. This is going to be a drawing in two-point perspective, so this line will be my imaginary horizon or eye line on which both the vanishing points lie. Next, I like to feel the shapes of the building out with my pencil, working lightly and quickly without worrying too much about how accurate my lines are. This stage is all about capturing the form of the major components within the scene. Once I have light pencil sketches in all the right places, I can darken the major outlines. As I've said, I'm using perspective for this drawing, so I'm going to extend those outside lines out until they meet the horizon line where they should intersect. Okay, so now I have the main building drawn from which I can reference the rest of the scene. I'm going to start sketching in other buildings and some of the road layout. Again, important point here, it actually doesn't matter if this is perfectly accurate. It's a drawing, not a photograph, and it will never be perfect, but to me this actually gives the great opportunity to play with that. I only need enough of the drawing to be accurate for the viewer to be able to recognise what the scene is, where it is. The placement and rough outline of the statue of Eros, the fountain, and the shape and perspective of the advertising screen are going to be the deal breakers here for me. Beyond that, I have total creative freedom with which to mess with the drawing in order to convey what it feels like to be standing at Piccadilly Circus in the middle of all of its crazy energy. Phase 2, I am finally happy with where everything is in the drawing, so now I can rub out the entire drawing just a little bit, leaving a light outline of my previous work. I can now go over the entire thing in a thinner and more precise line. Next, I'm going to add some details in pencil. What I'm doing here is trying to split up those empty shapes into different regions. If I ask you to draw a line and then split it up into six equal sections, it's difficult to make each section the same length. If at first you split the line in half and then split each half into three subsections, then it's much, much easier to make all six sections of the entire line equal than if you just try to draw six equal sections to start with. The same principle applies here with all of this detail work. I like to draw detail in these London drawings, but I wouldn't actually describe my drawings as highly accurate, detailed technical sketches at all. Rather, I want to convey the impression of detail. Often, if you look closely, many of my lines are actually just scribbles. In fact, sometimes you don't even need to look closely at all in order to see that, as will be the case later in this video in the road and the movement of the vehicles and the people. Phase 3. Now I am moving to pen. I start by drawing the most important outlines of the most important shapes within the drawing. No surprise, I start with the advertising screen. From there, it's just a case of carefully going over the pencil lines to build the entire image up before going further and further into the detail. Honestly though, at this point it is plain sailing. We are past the most difficult part, getting all of the proportions right in the drawing. Now we can just spend the rest of the time carefully working through all of the detail as we so wish. One thing to note is the importance of line weight, that is, the thickness of your lines. There are different ways of deciding which lines should be the thickest. The temptation is always to make the outlines thickest, but since there aren't really any outlines in real life, this risks making your drawings look like cartoons. Instead, as a general rule of thumb, lines and colours should be thicker and richer if they're closer to the viewer, and thinner and less saturated if they're further away from the viewer. Since I have chosen that I want the screen and the fountain to be the most prominent, I will make them stand out by increasing the contrast at their edges and darkening them and their outlines compared to their surroundings. Another thing I like to do to combat the instinct to only draw outlines is to not do that, to try to just draw the shadows instead. Now this feels like a slightly strange thing to do, and it often doesn't look right until you've finished doing it. However, I do recommend that you experiment with doing this, because you can get some pretty interesting results. For example, drawing the black inside the window panes in a building, instead of drawing each individual window sash, then you might be surprised at how you get a much more real feeling drawing. I use this quite a bit in my drawing of the Harrods building in the series. I want to capture the dynamism in the scene, and in order to do this I do two things. Firstly, actually physically drawing the lines of movement of all of the traffic, the vehicles and the people, and secondly, water-soluble ink. <laughs> 
Once I have most of the detail in pen in a medium thickness line weight, I am rubbing out any underlying pencil because it's getting a bit hectic and now I'm going to just continue working on the detail into thinner and thinner line weights, building up the texture within the surfaces. All of the standard Stadler, Secura Micron and Copic Fineliner pens I've been using here are not water soluble and so they won't smudge if I get them wet. However, I also have a different pen that is water soluble. I draw very loose outlines of just the front or just the side of a bus or a taxi and then I can go back with a thin paintbrush wetted with water and blur out different shapes from these outlines. This adds both a bit of form to the traffic and I also think it creates a sort of sense of motion blur. So it's a really kind of those two things combined makes a kind of quite interesting effect, I think. Phase four. I left the screen itself till last. Right now it is entirely white and so very bright. I want to keep that effect because of course it is a screen and therefore would be lit up. So um, firstly I'm going to lightly split the screen up in pencil and sketch some different advert logos that I like from different reference images on the internet. Then I'm very lightly going over the logos in my thinnest fine liner, of course because it's a thinner line weight it's going to be less prominent and it won't darken that bright white effect that I already have. Once I rubbed out the pencil, I decided it stuck out a little compared to the dynamic road, so I went over and even more lightly sketched some other adverts on top of the ones I had already drew in an attempt to mimic the fact that the screen obviously changes the adverts it displays over time, and so capture the dynamism of the screen too in order to match the rest of the scene. Phase 5, tweaking. I go back in thinner pens to increase contrast at the edges that don't stand out enough for my liking and increase the depth of the shadows in different parts of the image where I feel it is lacking until I'm happy with the finished drawing. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you found it interesting to hear about how I go about my drawings and what my artistic thoughts are behind my ideas. If you've got any questions, if you don't understand anything, please by all means, shove it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer every comment. If you'd like to have a go at this one, also look out for the real-time drawing video that'll come out next Sunday. And in the meantime, have a very Merry Christmas. Goodbye.